In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how subplot defines or determines the positions in an array. So to start with, I want to look right down here in the, the command window. Subplot, which is something that I introduced last time, but it, it works in the following way. M, N, and P breaks the figure window into an N by N matrix of small axes, selects the pth axes for the current plot. The axes are counted along the top row of the figure, then the second row, for example, 211, 212. Okay, this is a little confusing, so I'm going to show you something, but first I have to explain the code that I've made here. I am going to, again, clear out my, uh, win my workspace, close any open figure, clear out my command window. I'm then going to ask the user, which will be me, to input the number of rows, then I'm going to input the number of columns, then I'm going to state that position, my first position equals 1, which will become more obvious when this becomes a graphical example. And then I'm going to uh, put everything that I need to do inside of two nested for loops. The outer loop is going to go from one to the number of rows, so first we're going to work our way through the rows. But in each row, we're then going to work our way through each column. So this is similar to the nested for loops in the loops uh, playlist. So if you need a little bit of understanding of how this works, you'll see that video. Um, but for all intents and purposes, this is going to be a graphical representation of how that works. So they two probably should walk hand in hand or could help you. Now we're going to use the subplot. Um, when we issue the subplot command, we're going to have the same number of rows and same number of columns each time because our array will never change. Our position will, however. Our position will start at 1, and then I'm going to plot the origin. This just opens a, a plot for me to put some text inside of. Okay, This is sort of an empty gesture. Because the next thing I want to do is I want to put some text in there. At the origin, 0, 0, I want to take the position, which is going to count from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to however many we have, rows by columns and I'm going to turn that number into a string. So now I'm going to have a string that I'm going to put into my window, my plotting window, at the origin. And then I'm going to add 1 to my position so that the next time my position, which was 1, is 2. And which was 2 is 3. Was 3 is 4. So here, this will make a little more sense when we run it. Um, just remember, subplot, number of rows, number of columns, position. So number of rows, number of columns, position. So let's run it. How many rows would we like to be in this array? So let's start with three. How many columns? Let's say two. And so now I have three rows, one, two, three, two columns, one and two. Now this shows the enumeration scheme for the subplots, one, two, three, four, five, six. Notice that we started at the top left, moved our way across the row. When we ran out of columns, we moved down to the next row. When we ran out of columns, we moved down to the next row. When we ran out of columns, we were done. Now, in this example, the enumeration does owe itself to how I wrapped up these nested for loops. However, this is exactly how the subplot function works. You can see our previous video where we introduced the subplot function. Position 1, position 2, position 3, position 4, position 5, and position 6. And this remains true no matter what number of rows or what number of columns we have. So now let's do something like 5 by 3. So now I have 5 rows and 3 columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this code right here will show you, no matter how many rows, no matter how many columns you have, what the position numbers are. I think at the end of the last one, we said 20 and 20. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll see if it shows up really well. 20 and 20. I don't know. Oh, it's busy. Hold on. There we go. That's why it took a long time. Okay. Here. Let's see if we can get this to show up. Not 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 so well. Let's see. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit. I mean, you can see all of the numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way across to 20. And then all the way across to 40 and 60, all the way up to 400. So this is how the subplot function enumerates or determines what the positions are. Now again, in our previous video, we actually plotted some useful information in each one of those positions. So you can see that as far as it pertains to plotting information once you've identified a position. But I hope this helps. Um, so until next time.